Yeah, I could have a bit with Ampon, couldn't I? Actually. Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, it's the day before I go on holiday. Now, I want to try and tell you everything that's going to happen the whole week that I'm on holiday. I'll give you all the news before it happens. <laughs> okay. Now, there's a few things that I can tell you that I know are on the cards to happen. So inside of PC Experimental Branch is an update that went in on the 11th of the 9th, which has quite a lot of stuff on there. You can see there, fixed an issue that caused the Exoskip infantry to be too small on pre-existing saves. It's actually been upped massively to what it was inside of the expedition. So it turns out that perhaps it was actually a bug rather than a feature of it being limited 10 slots. So that's happening. That's going to happen. That Hopefully that patch is going to go out everywhere. Your skiff is going to be less skiffy. It's not going to wobble around as much. It still will, but not as much. It also, inside of these patch notes, is going to stop the storms from affecting you as much on side of the skiff as well, which is another awesome, awesome fix. Now, if you can't read this because you're on a mobile phone and it's way too small, I'll put a link to this inside of the video description so you can hit this up and look at it in your own leisure but there's also another fix on here people all the baits and all of the food items that you put on your hook to do your fishing they've all got differing amounts or inside of this patch are going to be altered take for instance the bionic law that i've done a video on that's freaking awesome on how to make a bionic law farm i'll put a link up there people Go watch that if you want the Bionic Law, because that Bionic Law is going from a 64% rarity catch rate all the way up to a 94% rarity catch rate. Now, over on PC Experimental, though, I've been doing some experimenting, because that's what you do. <laughs> and i done maybe, what, 20 casts? And out of those 20 casts, I got something like about 14 rares, which is that's actually better the rarity catch that's the purple ones you know a classes yeah i got more of those what i didn't catch out of those see all the 20 that i casted i didn't get a single legendary so the whole thing of it being 94 percent catch rate i think it's given you a better chance of getting rare fish but not the legendaries because i didn't catch a single one in those 20. it still feels quite you know, maybe one in like 60 that you might get a legendary i don't think it's been up to all that much or if it has i've just been seriously unlucky on my testing inside of pc experimental before i've gone on holiday i do want to do more you know i've already done all of the ice biome so if you're trying to complete your fishing catalog check out my videos on the, what i've done recently in the last week or so because i've caught all the ice biome fish and all the swamp biome fish so you can at least get two biomes nailed you can even use my bases that i've set up predominantly for fishing and i've actually got fishing holes set at different depths so if you're struggling to find an enormous fish you can go to the one that's 70 used deep and catch it pretty darn quick go check out those two videos that i've done they're they're not they're not hard to find ah what else can i tell you Okay, so while I'm on holiday, we've got the community mission running, and the community mission is coming to an end, pretty much. I mean, when I say community mission, it is, that's what it's called on the actual tiles down here inside the No Man's Sky Assistant app. So that one there, community mission. And you can see there, we've now unlocked two of the posters. We've got the ship parts poster. The only one left is the bake sale poster. Now, this bake sale poster, it, it does look kind of nice. I mean, there it is in all of its glory. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it lovely? Heck yes. But that is going to unlock while I'm over in Cyprus. So that's going to unlock. And then after that, we've actually got three fireworks to come in. We've got a purple ribbon firework, a blue ribbon firework, then a teal ribbon firework. Now, I don't know whether the colours really denote much, but the, pur the purple one is interesting. Purple ribbon firework, considering that we're going to be getting purple systems coming into space at some point. This exotic firework sparkling with Atlantium, which is one of the ingredients that we need to get to the purple systems and an aut autonomy element bursts into a cluster of wild spiraling ribbons ignite and create a glittering displays in the sky yeah so there we go got introduced in the orbital update to that one but we're going to get purple systems soon now i know we've already got blue systems but teal we haven't got any teal systems in space have we unless you change it to race and then teal is the color of corvax isn't it 
Hmm. Interesting. Well, I find it interesting anyway. We got we got we got fireworks. Okay. After these fireworks, there is nothing. There's nothing left to be had inside the Quicksilver store. So I think after these fireworks end is when we're going to see another update come into No Man's Sky. And that, I think, will coincide with the expedition that we've got running right now. Yes, Aquarius Expedition. I think the Aquarius Expedition is going to end. We're going to get new Quicksilver items, and I think there's going to be one hell of a big update. I do. And I think it's going to happen mid to late October. Uh, I think we're going to see something a little bit more creepy around the Void Mother. Now, during the actual Void Mother ARG were some very creepy sound effects, which I think I might still have. If I have, I will put them right here so you can hear them. But they're creepy as fudge. So, yeah, that's a bit of an odd one. I'll do a little intersection. Prepare to um, put on your brown trousers. Holes. But this only lasts for about a minute and like 20 seconds. Here we go. Pretty terrifying. If it gets worse, it's going to get loud. Okay, now that's the end of the actual sound bite, and um, it's dodgy, isn't it? So I think you can agree that sounded fairly creepy, right? So Halloween happens in October, and Hello Games have done creepy updates in the past, like Desolation, The Abyss, stuff like that. And they've been around the sort of Halloween sort of area. They even added in Tainted Metal, and you could swap that with the actual scrap vendor that lives under the stairs and stations now. And you could trade that for some Halloween sort of bits and bobs. I'm wondering where we might get some more of those this Halloween. It'd be nice if they do up the ante with the, uh, the scrap vendor, make the scrap vendor a little bit more you know, visitable, per se. Yeah, so I think that could all happen, and I honestly do think it's going to be the ARG Part 4. I think we're going to have that come in, and I think inside of that it might deliver in the, the Ariadne sort of storyline, because the Ariadne that we have in the station at the moment is an imposter. New players don't know this. It was from a weekend mission lore a couple of summers back. There was a whole side mission that happened. She went missing. She went in between the systems between systems. These new purple systems are going to be activated between systems between systems. Now, she went aboard a giant dark freighter. I don't know whether the pirate dark, uh, dreadnoughts that we have now count as a dark freighter. I don't think it does. I think we could be in for a bit of a treat. And I'm wondering whether she's some sort of spy on behalf of the Void Mother inside of our realm. I don't know. Can't say for sure. Also, during some of these side arcs and missions that we've done, like the Traces of Metal, you know, that ends with our little Laylapse droid mentioning Null. I honestly do think that Null is going to come into the story a little bit more, and I think maybe aligned with the Void Mother in some way. I mean, he got shunned by the Atlas and ignored. The Void Mother is very good at listening to those that don't have a voice that have been ignored, and I'm wondering whether Null is going to be her main adversary, you know, um, what is it, person, you know. 
<laughs> I can't remember the actual name. It sounds like Emer Emissary or something like that. You know, a, a, a messenger of the Void Mother, per se. So I think that could happen. I also think these purple systems might be more of a home to the autophages. Yes, because the autophages don't really have a system. They're kind of like little vagabonds. They appear at these echo camps, little mini echoes everywhere. I think the purple systems might be more their home world. Now, people are saying to me, Kansas Steve, what do you think the Void Mother's going to look like? Ah, this, I think, could be a little bit anticlimactic. So you've got the Atlas station. Uh, it's on the poster right here. You see it's being blown to shite and all panels are coming off the Atlas right now. Well, I'm wondering whether that's going to play in. I mean, I think this is actual concept art or something. But I'm wondering whether the Void Mother is just going to be a purple Atlas station. You go inside of an Atlas station, it looks like any other Atlas station apart from it's purple. That's what I reckon the Void Mother is going to look like. I really hope that's not the case. I kind of hope that, you know, the Void Mother is something a little bit more amazing than that. But... At the same time, I, I think that could be on the cards. So brace yourself for that one. Uh, mainly because we're choosing whether we want to do the Atlas Eternal Path or the, align with the Atlantium. And I think it would just make more sense if the Atlas and the Void Mother looked fairly similar in style. That's what I reckon anyway. I find it a bit weird that the Void Mother hasn't really got a Greek name. But then when you look at it and it's called the Atlantid and you've got Atlantis, that still ties in very much so in keeping with Greek mythology and the whole idea of the Atlas and the Atlantid. And one being red, one being purple. It just feels that in namesake, they're very similar. And I think in visual appearance, they're going to be very similar. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think on that idea. Or whether you feel that if they do do that, it's a genuine missed opportunity by Hello Games for something awesome. But at the same time, I don't, I don't think that means that we won't see something awesome. It's like the Corrupted Sentinels. The Corrupted Sentinels are all purple, aren't they? They've all got purple crystals jutting out of them. I think the Void Mother has got something to do with the corruption inside of the Sentinel units and making these Corrupted Sentinels. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar as a Corrupted Sentinel boss. Because we've got the boss bars now that appear on the Walker, I think we might see boss bars appearing on whatever gets put in as a boss at Corrupted Sentinel level. I also think those boss bars, because they've been quite good on the sort of like uh, beta creatures that we see on planets now and the infestations and whatever the brood the brood mothers i kind of feel that we're probably seeing more boss bars appearing on creatures inside of no man's sky perhaps if they do make oceans deeper inside these purple systems we might come across boss creatures with these energy bars also giant underwater megafauna i think hello games have been listening and heard that we do want more megafauna hence why we've got the brood mothers and i'm wondering whether we might even get boss bars appearing eventually in time on the giant worms that jump around the planets i really do hope we can do comment combat with with those at some point i wouldn't be surprised if hello games don't try and do something with those giant worms in adding boss bars around the time that june goes live on all platforms because people are going to be stoked up to be fighting worms inside of june i think hello games might capitalize on that and say right okay boom you can now do combat with our worms as well ha <laughs> ha there you go june fans what do you think of that just to capture some of the market that's what i reckon anyway people that's everything that i think could happen I mean, not all of that's going to happen the week that I'm away. <laughs> okay. Some of this is probably going to happen in Worlds Part 2, though, I think, people. Or if it doesn't happen in Worlds Part 2, I think it could be on the cards for next year. And if it's not, hopefully Hello Games have watched this video. Hello, Hello Games, if you're watching. There's some ideas for you. <laughs> Maybe put some on your radar. Think, oh, we could rework that. We could make that work. Not quite like what he's saying, but yeah, that could work. That that actually makes sense. <laughs> nice one. And thank you for everything you're doing, LA Games. And I really hope that in December, at the Game Awards, you do something around Light No Fire. It needs to be framed. It needs to be framed. We need to know what we're doing in that game. Why? Why are we all on this planet together working together? Why have you chose the title Light No Fire? Is there something to do with wading off evil by lighting fires? Without fire? Magical cesspits to ward off evil? I don't know. <laughs> Let us know. That'd be nice, you know? Anyhow, that's everything I got for you people. So, there's a big patch inside of PC Experimental. That's in the video description. Quicksilver items, the posters are about to end. We're getting fireworks. All those things are happening in the next week. What's not happening in the next week is the expedition's not going to end next week. The expedition is still running until mid-October. I'm going to be back way before then. 
with more speculation, more gameplay, more everything to do with No Man's Sky. And if you like this video and you like the way I think, hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you when I get back from Cyprus. And for all of those that are interested in what the old captain's up to in his real life, I do do vlogs. So I am going to do daily vlogs of my time in Cyprus, out there with Ivy, seeing my uncle who's he's really into reptiles. He used to work at Whipsnay Zoo. He used to be a zookeeper inside of the reptile house. The guy is freaking epic, and hopefully I can bring some of that onto the camera. His wife Elaine is just lovely. She's a bundle of joy. She's actually quite funny, very down to earth, very bubbly. And I think you're going to like Elaine as well. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully people, you're going to like Cyprus, and you're going to join me on that jaunt and hit a couple of likes to those videos. Heck yes, I like to entertain. This channel is about putting smiles on people's faces and to just lift people's mood. <sighs> And I hope that I've done that even in this video. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.